x cubed plus 2x squared minus x plus 1 divided by x squared minus 3x plus 5. If you're given a cubic polynomial like this and asked to divide a quadratic expression, you can use synthetic division just like in my previous videos, but you'll have to make a few changes to it. Here's what it looks like. So as you can see, it's still fairly short compared to long division. And if you've watched my previous videos on how to use synthetic division for linear divisors, then I'll show you here how to modify that method to get this answer. G'day guys, this is the math base. So just like the synthetic division in my other videos, you want to draw a big L to set it up. Inside it, you're going to have three rows of numbers. That is one more row than what it used to be, because your divisor is one power higher than what it used to be. Before it was some kind of linear divisor, now it's a quadratic divisor. It used to be x to the power of 1, now it's x to the power of 2. And so you put three rows instead of two rows inside. On the first row, we have our usual suspects, the coefficients of the cubic. 1, positive 2, negative 1, and positive 1. Now, because we're dividing by a quadratic, which is a second degree polynomial, or basically with a power of 2, we want to isolate the last two columns, not just the last column. And remember how there's always a zero in the corner? Well, this time we have three zeros in the corner to fill up both rows, but one of those zeros needs to be pushed all the way to the end of the second row. And as for what needs to be written outside, since we have two rows of zeros now, we will have to write two divisors outside. These divisors come from negative 3 and positive 5. And just like in the usual synthetic division, you'll want to take the opposite sign of these numbers. So positive 3 and negative 5, written in that order. Now that we have this all set up, we have to deal with the tricky bit. The usual sequence of operations for linear synthetic division is to add times add times and keep alternating in that order until you reach your remainder. But since we're dividing a quadratic or a power of 2, the sequence would be add times times, add times times, add times times in that order repeatedly until you have nothing left to fill inside the second and third row. So first we take 1 and plus 0 plus 0 and we get 1. Now take that sum and multiply positive 3 first. The product is 3, and that goes into the same row as where you multiplied. Then you take 1 and multiply negative 5, putting that in the third row as negative 5. Just remember, when you're adding, it always goes downwards, and when you're multiplying, you have to write the numbers in a diagonal sequence. So repeating this for the next set of numbers, you just take 2 and add 3, plus 0, giving you 5. Then take 5 times by 3 outside, write the product of 15 in the next empty spot on that row, and then take the same 5, multiply negative 5, giving us negative 25 in the last spot. And from the looks of it, there is nothing left to fill into the second and third row, so all we need to do is just add downwards for the rest of it. And these are for our remainders. So negative 1 plus 15 minus 5 gives us positive 9, 1 plus 0 plus or minus 25 gives us negative 24. The final step is to figure out how to write the quotient and the remainder into some kind of answer. It's going to be similar to how you do linear synthetic division. Basically take the highest degree of your polynomial, which is x cubed, and divide that by the highest degree of your divisor, which is x squared. This x to the power of 1 tells us what our quotient is going to be. It's going to be some kind of linear expression, which is simply 1x plus 5. But the remainder looks a little bit different from our typical kind of synthetic division. There's two numbers here. So I find it a lot easier to figure out what kind of expression to write by first counting up from 0 from the right side. You can do this for the quotient as well. So if you write a little 0 next to the 5 and count up from there, there'll be a 1 next to the big blue 1, and that red little 1 represents the power of 1 for x. Doing something similar for 9 and negative 24, 
we find that the remainder is going to be 9x to the power of 1 minus 24. Add those together, making sure you divide your remainder by the original quadratic, x squared minus 3x plus 5. And that's your answer. But keep in mind that this is only one form. This is the form you get when you do your division, right? So the quotient would add the remainder over the divisor. If you wanted to write the other form, which is basically the polynomial being rewritten or rephrased, that would be your quotient multiplying your divisor, adding your remainder, which is not the usual format. So that would be x plus 5 times x squared minus 3x plus 5 plus 9x minus 24. If you expand that expression, you will end up getting back the original cubic polynomial, x cubed plus 2x squared minus x plus 1. Both answers are acceptable, but it really depends on which format they want you to write it in. So just pay attention to that when they ask it in the question. Okay, so if that all made sense, let's have a look at another one. So here we have a massive fifth degree polynomial dividing a quadratic. So as usual, you want to set up your L bracket with all the coefficients inside, making sure to write the ones that are also invisible or missing, like 0x cubed, followed by isolating the last two numbers and writing all the zeros in. And now take note that x squared is only adding 3. The middle term is missing. x squared plus 0x plus 3 is what we're supposed to be dividing. So the two numbers we need to take are 0 and 3, making sure to take the opposite sign for 3. So we'll put 0 and negative 3 in. From here, do it just like the other question where you first add everything. So 2 plus 0 plus 0, which gives you 2, followed by multiplying that to 0 and negative 3 outside and write those products into a diagonal sequence in the second and third row. And then you add 1 with 0 and 0 to get the next sum, multiplying that over and writing the diagonal sequence, keeping it up until you get to the very end. Just make sure that when you're adding the numbers, you only do it when you have a complete set of three numbers to add together. So now we have our coefficients 2, 1, negative 6, and negative 4. This is for our quotient and we have the coefficients for our remainder, 16 and 13. What kind of quotient will we be making? You can take one of two approaches to figure that out. You can either take the highest degrees and divide them, so x to the power of 5 divided by x squared, giving us x cubed, or just as easily you can count up from negative 4, with, in terms of powers, as 0, 1, 2, and 3, which indicates the same thing. And so our quotient is 2x cubed plus 1x squared minus 6x minus 4. And with the remainder, the powers are 0 and 1, and so it is still a linear expression, which means we're adding 16x plus 13 over our divisor x squared plus 3. And once again, this is just the usual form, but you could write it as a rephrased polynomial, if that's what they want in the question, as 2x cubed plus x squared minus 6x minus 4 times x squared plus 3 plus 16x plus 13. If you expand that, you should get back your original fifth degree polynomial that you were trying to divide in the first place. Needless to say, this is clearly a technique that is a little bit advanced, a little bit more complicated than the usual thing. I normally only teach this to my specialist math students, but you may find it useful in methods if you end up dividing a quadratic expression. You don't have to. I don't think it's that different from doing long division in this case. But if you do get how this works, you'll probably notice that there is a pattern in how it was modified. Because, for example, right, if I took a 6th degree polynomial and divided a cubic expression, you can actually modify the technique further in terms of how many numbers you isolate, how many zeros you put in the corners, and how many divisors you put outside. And then the sequence of adding and timesing would also just change accordingly. The way we would end up writing our answers is still the same, but I think when it comes to bigger divisions like this, it really depends on which one is longer. Most of the time, long division is going to be a lot longer and sadder and more frustrating. And most of the time, synthetic division will be quicker, more pain-free, and you're less likely to make any mistakes with it. But ultimately, the choice is yours on what you think is the best technique to use in a particular problem. So I hope this video has given you guys a new and potentially better way to do polynomial division. And if it has, Please do leave a comment or a like so that I know that this has helped you.
and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell for more content like this in the future. Thanks guys, see you next time!